We looked at the first and second person personal pronoun as well as some third declension extras in chapter 11, now into chapter 12, and the third person personal pronoun, autos. Join me as we pray. Lord, help students to think through ego, su, and autos, the first, second, and third person personal pronouns, to remember their declension patterns, especially the 212 pattern that we're looking at here with pronouns and help them with vocab. Help them to, to have some success now in putting together phrases and sentences even. Ask in Christ's name. Amen. When we think about the first and second person personal pronouns, again, first person here, second person, ego, and sue are your lexical forms. So any of these words, when you parse, they come from sue, mu, moi, me, Chemes, chemon, chemin, chemos, all the way up, these all come from ego. So first person and second person, I, you. Now on to the third person, personal pronoun. That is just an ugly three. I'm going to erase it and fix that before we move to the next slide. There we go, a little better. Third person, personal pronoun. He, she, and it. Here, just an English review. Uh, again, he, she, it for the different genders. In the first and second person personal pronoun, we didn't think about gender. But in the third person, there is gender specific uh, reference. So he, she, or it. And then with the possessive or objective, uh, his, hers, its, him, her, it, and then in the plural, just they. Again, the they, the, the plural, doesn't have a specific uh, gender reference in English. They could be masculine, could be feminine, could be neuter, a group of objects. When we think about the pattern that we use for the second, first, second, and third person personal pronouns, especially so with the third person personal pronoun, you can see anyway that the two, one, two pattern. Suing, eon, is, us, sin, eon, is, just sigma, and then nuing, aon, is, a. Ah. So we're in that two, one, two pattern and then remembering that those left side here the actual case endings we stick them on a final stem vowel and we have what is on the right hand side of the slash when we think about the definite article and its consistency here the definite article is not going to change with a noun or a pronoun. It's going to stay exactly constant. And uh, you've probably memorized this by now. If not, you should have it down. Make sure that you get this down because it will help you. Uh, again, the genitive, you can see the similarity there and the dative, accusative, and so forth. Just a few uh, uh, distinctions at times, especially with the nominative singular and the masculine. But otherwise, just such consistency uh, all the way across. And here we have our uh, our paradigm, autos, aute, auta. So masculine is autos, feminine, aute, neuter, auta. And again, this ending on the neuter that we have here in the nominative singular, exactly the same as accusative. Plural, plural, exactly the same. So these patterns that we've looked at in these noun rules are going to be exemplified here with autos. And we have, the again, the, the masculine and then the feminine and the neuter. Autos, aute, auta. Just looking at the feminine, aute, to autes, aute, autain, autai, autone, autais, autos. Let's think about the uses of the third person personal pronoun. Uh, we, we are aware that a specific designation determines the function of a noun in Greek. 
and that designation is its case. The case of autos is determined how by, by how the author wants to use it in the sentence. Its person and number are determined by its antecedent, what it's standing in for. And we'll see that here as we progress. So uh, autos can be just a personal pronoun, like the first person personal pronoun, ego, the second person, sue, now we have the third person here is autos. This is the first of what will be three possible uses. So the first use of autos is as a pronoun similar to ego and su. Uh, and it can function as a pronoun as the subject or the object or possessive, just like the other two pronouns that we looked at. So here's our verb opsantai out toy first person or the third person nominative singular they will see god the direct object outon singular here the devil is our subject took paralambane the devil took him to the holy city. Him here, the direct object, and as well possessive, his name. As I noted a moment ago, the antecedent of autos is what determines its number and gender. Its case is determined by how the author wants to use it, that referent in a sentence. So, for instance, here in, in Hebrews 1 5, Tinigar Apen. Patiton angelon, huios mu a su. Just thinking about this phrase right here, huios mu a su. You are my son. And here, here's this. You are my son. And we go on. Ego semeron, gegene kase, kai palin ego esomai auto es patera. Here, this auto, the, here, Kai, and again, I, I will be to him, this auto, a father. Well, who is auto right here referring to? It's referring to Huios. I will be to him a son. So, auto here replaces Huios. That's its function. Auto is functioning as a personal pronoun, replacing huios. And because it is functioning as the indirect object, it is in the dative singular. Autos can also be used as an adjectival intensive. This is one of two adjectival uses as, uh, of autos. We'll look at the identical adjective in just a moment. So the first use is as a pronoun. The second use is as an intensive. It can an intensify a noun that it modifies. And in the sense that it's modifying, it's acting as an adjective, it matches case, number, and gender with the noun it, it modifies. It's usually in the predicate position, means it doesn't have an article, and most often in the nominative case. Here's clue number one, clue number two, that you have the possibility of a toss functioning as an intensive. So we here look at Mark 12, 36. Apen, a verb of speech here. We'll, we'll learn this soon enough and getting to verbs, but here's, here's our verb, and its subject is David, but we have this extra a toss right here. And this autos is modifying David, David himself. And this himself provides a nuance of intensity. David himself spoke in the Holy Spirit. Autos de huios uk epistusen, auton autois diaton auton genoskein pontis. Uh, John 2.24 here has four references of autos. Let me clear away my marks and we can look at, uh, at each one here and have uh, some, some further clarity. Here's our verb, epistusen, and the subject, Jesus, 
Jesus did not entrust epistusen here, meaning entrust, but hear this autos modifies Jesus. Jesus himself, see this autos, when it's an intensive, it's superfluous. It, it's not necessary. You could translate this, Jesus uh, did not entrust himself. But this autos, this use of it here, provides an intensity. It's superfluous, but it's it's providing, and it's not necessary. Therefore, because it's there, it provides this intensity. Jesus himself did not entrust himself, right here, autan, entrust himself to them. Autois is them. You see the dative plural. Because he knew all men. This autan an accusative is the subject of this infinitive, and we'll get to that later. But these four instances of autos, and here two of them, himself and himself, are uh, uh, references to Jesus, but only this one here is the intensive. Jesus did not, Jesus himself did not entrust himself to them because he knew all men. So four instances of autos, this one here, this is the intensive. Here, we just have a direct object, indirect object, and here this auton is the subject of this infinitive. Another instance of the intensive autos here, autoi, they, here we have a question mark and it's important to keep that in mind as I pronounce the sentence. Uk autoi blasphemusin ta kalon anima ta epiklepthen ephumas. Do not they themselves, here they themselves blaspheme the good name by which you are called. Here's our verb, blasphemusin. They blaspheme and the autoi right here is not necessary and it's an intensive, and they themselves. It's modifying the subject that's already in that verb and its ending. So, autos can be used as a pronoun, it can be used as an intensive, or it can be used here in this third use as an identical adjective, in which case, again, it, it matches case number gender with its antecedent. And here it's translated with an extra phrase called the same. It's, it's referring to the same thing. It's a repetitive kind of adjective. Here, uh, op elthon is, is uh, a verbal as well as prox, uh, pros, a yuxata, pros a yuxata. Kai Pauline Apelthon Prasayuksata Tan Auton Logon. This Auton here is not necessary. It could be just translated and again departing. He prayed the word. But with this use of Auton right here, it's now the same thing. Notice that the definite article, let me erase a bit here so that you can see, the definite article here is on auton. That is a distinction between the second and third use of autos. That second use, the adjectival intensive, normally does not have that definite article. It's in the predicate position. But with the definite article, as it is here, uh, the same. And uh, you, you see that even in the translation, the same ton, that definite article. Uh, here, because aute is following this preposition n, which often uh, can have, but does not need to have the, the definite article, uh, there's a bit of ambiguity, but here you can see in the English translation, Prosalthon uh, is our verb. Some of the Pharisees came. This is our verb. Prosalthan. They came in that hour. 
in that hour in the same hour. Here, the tehora could be just by itself in the hour, but this use of aute is an identical use. It's a repetitive use in the same hour. So we have these three uses of autos. The first one as a pronoun, the second one an intensifier, the third one just a repetitive use, an identical adjective. Vocab, again, the more creative you can be. Uh, youthus, youth, I hear the word youth, and youth are notorious for speedy, hasty activity, youthus. And this is uh, a, a word that occurs very frequently in the Gospel of Mark. And uh, you want to just remember that. If you have a chance to read through Mark, you'll see euthus used often. Did Ascalos ditto? A teacher may repeat something over and over. Ditto, ditto, and did Ascalos. Continue to work on that vocab. Again, multiple times a day, the more that you can do, the better off you'll be.